Hello and welcome to the Reload Podcast. My name is Josh, your host for today. I am sitting here with Mr. Joe Visaya Porn. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. And Joe, you are, um, from what I got from your emails, you are the squadron leader for the company Music Loop. I am indeed. And we were just talking about your your title, um, squad, Squadron Leader. Can you explain to me how you got to that? Uh, well, when, when I started the job nine years ago, um, there were only a few of us in the company. And uh, my job, my actual job is Global Sales Director. Sweet. And I said, that sounds a bit <laughs> not to my liking. Can I make me own one up? And they, my boss said, yeah. So oh, I love it. Squadron and Leader. So am I right in saying your boss was a, a mate? Friend, yeah. He was a friend, friend. yeah. Because that wouldn't fly by. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. You can only get away with that old friends. Yeah. Oh, um, Mark Mahari, he's a very good friend of mine. He's also the founder and CEO of Music yeah. Blue. So Music Loo has been going on for since 2007, we yeah. were talking, and you came in 2008. Eight. Yeah. And for those of the, for the listeners who don't know what Music Loo is, I even tried to, to look at a few blurbs and figure out what exactly is Music Loo. Yeah. I came across terms like it's a free-to-use online marketing and e-commerce commerce solution for artists, managers, promoters, and venues. And I came across uh, it's also a Music Loo is a direct-to-fan platform, which, is, which I liked. But when I went onto your socials, I got the sentence that I wanted, <laughs> which explained everything, which is, I uh, love this, the band is the brand, we make it easy for fans to buy directly from the artists they love in one simple transaction. Exactly. So, um, uh, can you elaborate as to what Music Loo is actually about? Yes, so it, it has been, I'm glad you like that uh, term, because <laughs> we've, we've, we've just come, come along kind of come along that with that one. Okay. Um, we do do a lot, mm-hmm. so it's always been very difficult to... Um, very simply and easily tell the world what we do. Um, But to go back to that phrase, we are um, a platform that allows any artist to sell tickets, merchandise, experiences, digital products um, to their fans directly on a free website um, and crucially have a single checkout. So when a fan comes, they can buy multiple things. Mm. uh, Check out simply and easily. The fan keeps that data, so they know exactly. So the artist keeps that data, so they know exactly who that fan is, mm. what they've spent, and where they live, and they can contact them. And then what we do in the background is we can pay the promoter, say communion music for the ticket, the label for the CD, and the band for the T-shirt. Mm. So we can figure that out in the background. But from a fan point of view, they just had a really easy transaction yeah. with an artist and. Um, I suppose the flip side to that is you go to many artists' websites and, uh, you know, we, we see a bad way of doing it is, is half the trouble of, of, of getting a fan base is getting them to come to your site. And when you get there, every single ticket link goes to a different company. Mm. There's an iTunes link, there's an Amazon link, there's yeah. a merch company link, and they've just left. And you, you kind of know you're selling stuff, but you're yeah. not entirely sure who's buying what. And yeah. um, are they buying more than one thing? So yeah. that's, that's kind of what we're trying to bring together. So you're doing all the... You're doing all the hard, dirty work in the background mm-hmm. and bringing it all into yeah. into one platform. One place, yeah. Um, I also, I read somewhere that it's um, from an artist who's just a DIY artist, or an independent artist, to pe- artists who are um, packing out stadiums. So mm-hmm. this is open to from level one to level ten. Yes, so we're agnostic. So we don't have a premium um, account. There's no monthly fees. And we've always um, wanted to build a platform that works for an artist that's just written their first song and needs a website and a way to give away an MP3 mm. all the way through to artists like, uh, you know, we work with Metallica running their merch wow. internationally. We have um, Enda Shikari where we do their merch and their tickets and, you know, their arena level bands. So we kind of work with some really big artists mm. um, and then thousands and thousands of up and coming artists and mm. we want everyone to have the same platform. That's nice. the dream. And that's, what's, and that's what they have. Yeah. So and you were saying that they said you help them sell tickets, um, music. You said experiences? What do mm-hmm. you mean by experiences? So experiences are um, can be anything. So, okay. for instance, we've had artists sell Skype calls. <laughs> no way. Um, so bands that are, have an international fan base, mm-hmm. but potentially are based in Bognor Regis and can't go and tour the Middle West of America, yeah. but potentially have fans there that they can go, well, look, for £100, we'll do a 35-minute Skype call. Can you these know, experiences be anything? Anything. We've got meet and greets. We've done dinners where um, bands have sold, you know, have come and have dinner with the band. Oh. We've had... Uh, we've got a band uh, at the moment um, called Little Comets who are doing um, 
handwritten lyrics f uh, for any one of their songs on, mm -hmm. on a canvas. You know, it says any type of thing that isn't kind of a mass-produced merch item and isn't a ticket and isn't a digital file. It's a, something a bit more kind of creative. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and we see it a lot with artists that are trying to use that to help generate revenue, maybe yeah. to, to get the £3,000 they need to make the record. Of course. So, um, so it kind of helps with that, that yeah, side yeah. of things. Because I, I remember reading a book somewhere um, <clears throat> talked about super fans, and they said that super fans are willing to, to pay that extra amount mm -hmm. and you need to be creative enough to figure out what to give what, what, what to sell to them yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah Skype calls and stuff like that yeah. a and, and what a Skype call for one band might work completely wrong for another artist yeah exactly um, I think the interesting thing for us is well we've been doing this such a long time that we now know that for instance that over five or six years of fan uh, one email address is worth 189 pounds mm. you know that kind of stuff becomes really important mm. um, and I'm often in, in conversations with artists and managers saying look using music glue now will benefit you but actually the benefit is going to be long term yeah exactly on your album in two years when you can look back and go oh actually I've got 7,000 people that I can yeah. email and I know that 5,000 of them spent 100 quid yeah exactly you know supporting my career that's really important you know and that yeah. gives you something to build on as opposed to I've got a lot of likes on my page mm. but I've got to pay Facebook to yeah. promote and that's why those yeah. um, those analytics are really important because mm -hmm. it can also help you decide where you should be heavily promoting your work. In like, should you be going to Germany and sorting? Uh, not Germany because they have so many restrictions out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. if I should be going to to Wales, if my fan base is there, that's yeah. where they're all buying. Should I create a tour over there, or should I go over to Scotland mm -hmm. or make it a European based uh, tour? Yeah. which is really uh, I can yeah. see really helpful. And we have the analytics as well. So we've got Twitter analytics, Facebook pixels. You know that whole side of things on the marketing um, and tracking side of things uh, we have we have that built in mm. so you know people can start to see what money is they're spending and if it's working those, yeah. those kind of things those yeah. tools so. and you were talking about some big names like Metallica mm. and um I forgot what the other names were, but I've, I saw that you also you have like a wide, a massive client list of um, mm. famous bands and artists that work yeah. on the music loop. Yeah, even people who are in um, record labels as well. Yeah, because um, I I just always assumed this was just for in, independent artists. Yeah, um, so you've got people like from Mumford and Sons, uh, Gabrielle Applin and Ben Howard. Do you have yeah. any like success stories where? Um, artists big or small have come down and they used your platform and it just really worked yeah i mean i think at the moment like at the moment we've got um blondie blondie's pre-order on sale mm. um through bmg which is going really really well we've got um gold fraps new pre-order oh, wow. um which is up and going really well we've got at the drive-ins new record for their first record in 17 years um so you know we've got you know that kind of range but mm. in regards to success stories from the past um yeah so like with ben howard and mumford and sons um we uh you know eight eight or nine years ago music glue was pretty much a give away a email in return for an email address and some data that's yeah. if, I'm, if i'm honest yeah that was kind of it and we weren't making any money out of that so we developed a director fan ticketing system um and we're very fortunate that um, we were working with uh, Mumford & Sons when they were at a very early stage of their career and Ben Howard. And those artists really wanted to have control hmm. of their ticketing and have, uh, have their fans come to them. Um, and they also didn't want their fans being ripped off and, hmm. uh, with excessive fees. So very early on in our um, career as a, our, our company, um, bands like that, you know those two in particular really fought with us to get as many tickets for their shows as possible, which at the time was, you know, not a normal thing to do. I think yeah. nowadays it's kind of like a, of course you do it, but actually mm. we were in, in those battles. And Mumford & Sons in particular um, have been fantastic in taking that to, you know, running their own festivals and booking their own shows. They've been incredible. Um, and we've been very fortunate that um, a band like Mumford & Sons in particular really supported us as a small company, mm. you know, when they were growing and when they went, it kind of skyrocketed it, mm. you know, but we were still working with them last year on their arena tour and oh, brilliant. Um, the Olympic Park show they did in 2012. So, that, you know, they've been a great, for us, a great success at a very early part of Music Glue. Mm -hmm. um, we've evolved into something else now. 
Um, but back then, that would be a very much a success story. And we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for those artists yeah, really yeah. supporting us. So, yeah. you know, we've been very fortunate on that level. Um, and we were talking earlier about being small and agile. Back yeah. then, Musical.ly was a much smaller company, um, and we were able to navigate, you know, how to... You could, you could pull your resources on those kind of things yeah. because, you know, that was what was working. Um, well, the service you provide is amazing. Like I said to you earlier when we were just walking into this interview, uh, I could see that I wanted to have you guys down because um, I could see the benefits you, you give to clients, um, to people like people on reload session. Mm -hmm. I can see how it, you can help, how it helps a lot of independent artists just to make everything uniform just yes. that it makes the whole process easier for them and their fans mm -hmm. and it's also because the fans need a good um a good experience yeah um and otherwise you, you could lose them which mm -hmm. is a really bad thing and, and so um i wanted to talk about is it just artists that can apply to be part of music glue am i right in saying venues and festivals can also take part yes so Anyone can work with us. Okay. Um, it's pr predominantly artists. Sure. I think we've just passed the 30,000 artists mark hey, that are on the platform. Um, but in our early days, actually, we worked with a lot of venues okay. uh, because we had developed this ticketing sure. system. Um, so we worked with a lot of independent venues, and we still work with, like we were saying, the Good Ship, mm -hmm. the Union Chapel and the Bush Hall. Mm -hmm. um, so we worked with some really, really great venues. Um, we work with several record labels, so... Um, uh, Transgressive, Wichita, Communion use our platform for their stores. Um, we obviously work with some other labels, kind of on project by project basis. Sure. Um, we work with merch companies, mm -hmm. you know, so the Metallica thing I mentioned, that's via um, a comp their merch company, Probity, who use our, our, our technology to run their stores. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's a real, real mixed bag. We do some festivals. Um, We've got a, uh, what did we do last week? Sutton United Football Club's no store because they were playing Arsenal. Oh, wow. You know, so that popped up. Um, and we also have a Speedway store, Speedway GP store. So we've kind of got a random random mix, but the majority mm. is music. We've, yeah. built, we've built the platform with what does an artist need. Exactly, yeah. But obviously some of those tools can... Uh, you know, a shop, yeah. a shop on some levels is a shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah, other sure. people can use it, yeah. Cool. I remember reading an article, I think it was written by your CEO, about um, B2C, uh, business to customer, and how it's very messy. Yes. And um, how you, how Music Glue is going to come in and try and fix the the, the interface, uh, the user interface, and make mm -hmm. it uh, right. Um, do you feel that you're, you're, you fixed it, or you, it's still things to sort out? Um, I think we have pretty much fixed it and we've got a lot of um, things coming into play this year nice. that will really help so we've just finished um, a project um, where we've upgraded all of our stores to um, our developers going to kill me for using the wrong words but basically <laughs> um, I think it's Facebook React so it's the code base Facebook use and okay. we've, just f we've just finished upgrading all of our stores to that um, which means they're super fast, super agile mm. and we can do far more with them so we've released I'm a feature now where you can kind of build a website on Music Glue, and if you know CSS, you can yeah. kind of play around with that. We're going to end up with multiple themes that people can download. Nice. Um, you know, we're really thinking through how easy it is for people to buy things, how mm. bundles work. Um, so that side of things is, you know, I think really, really easy for people to buy mm. and engage with. Um, some of the other things we're doing is inter interfacing with warehouses and fulfillment centers internationally. Oh, cool. Um, and um, there's a few other bits and pieces. But, you know, on, on some levels, I get to deal with the sexy bit, which is dealing with artists and managers mm -hmm. and shows and that kind of bit. But fundamentally, we're a tech company mm. um, and increasingly logistics-based um, because we have a platform that is a global platform. Yeah. So um, in the case of Blondie, you know, you go to that site – that site is actually three separate stores from three separate com countries, mm. all feeding into a single place. And depending on where you are, you see the right thing. Mm. You know, so there's fulfillment set up in Australia and in the US yeah. and in the UK. And so for us, we've built a platform that really can be a global solution to artists, as well as something that you can just ship an EP on. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. So, um, when was it? Uh, when when was it when you started seeing like success um, artists coming into Musically? It's a good question. Um, it 
Begs the question, what is success? Yeah, sure. Uh, Which I'm going to ask you nearly. After nine years, we've had lots of ups and downs. I would say in the early days, um, the bands signing up to give away a track, we had tens of thousands. Mm. Um, that was exciting. Mm. Um, I think, I know for me personally, when we sold out the sh two Shepherds Bush Empires for Mumford and Sons, nice. having worked with them at a Scala, and I think even smaller than that, yeah. Dimmals, you know, that was really exciting to be involved in seeing something like that really grow. Um, we've got a band called Bears Den that we've worked with from their first show at the Borderline, and they've mm. just sold out Brixton Academy, and they've got oh, a brilliant. Uh, Hammersmith Apollo. So those are kind of like artists I get really yeah, excited yeah. that having seen them at a much smaller stage. Yeah, and they're your you success go, stories. Yeah, those are success stories. Yeah, yeah. I think on the um, pl platform side, I think this year in particular, we've had the best start to a year Brilliant. ever. Yeah. Um, and we're just... Why do you think that happened? Um, I think there's a number of reasons. I think our platform is fantastic mm. um, and is really, really great. Um, I've got a fantastic sales and marketing team. We never had a marketing department until a year ago, mm. so... That's really helped. I mean, marketing is so important. Yeah, really yeah. important. We've got a fantastic marketing team. Um, we've got great tech, and we've got great customer support. And a, a, across our company, mm. there's multiply, multiple good people, um, even internationally. So we've got um, a team in America and in Australia who are also really good, really good people, really good at mm. what they do. And you kind of add all that up, and at some point it tips and yeah. you start doing stuff. It's that little um, compound effect. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and also working with some higher level artists, um, other people see that. And, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so this year I feel like it's already been a success and we're only at the, on the 2nd of, of March. Mm. So, so yeah, so it's been Brilliant. a success. Well, you're having a great first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> the grey hairs are where the things <laughs> haven't been successful. We don't need to go into that. <laughs> so I want to talk about your uh, Apply to Play platform. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came across it, I thought it was just a really great resource um, yeah. for, for artists. Just yes. so, um, am I right in saying you... You help artists apply to um, venues such as... Or that you, you're doing something with Metropolis, am I right in yeah. saying? Yeah, Metropolis could... is our latest one, which is really exciting. Metropolis Rising. Mm. Um, where With that one, it's 12 uh, monthly events um, with brand new talent. Um, they can sign up via Apply to Play. They get picked. And then they've got an accelerator program every quarter where... A few of the acts will get picked to play another showcase, and oh, then brilliant. if they if they win that, they'll I, I believe there's a bunch of kind of stuff they'll get studio that's time. That's brilliant, and so they can also apply to play for the Great Escape, which is finished. Yeah, um, that's just just closed. But we've yeah. got I, I think we've got twenty f or twenty five yeah, applies some, to play. Yeah. So the the concept is we've built a free widget, mm. like play widget that festivals or venues or, or you could use. Mm. Um, it's free to use, and in the back end of Music Glue, people can then apply. And you get to, um, you can, we, we ask them to, if they can't be bothered to upload an image and a song, just leave them. But what sure. we say is upload an image, upload a song, um, make your music loop profile look good. Because, mm. you know, the benefit for us of is course. we get bands using the platform. Um, you can then go through it, listen to the music, star it out of five, and then you can kind of find your, your top whatever and look to to book them, you can email them, you can see where they're from, you can read their bio. So, mm. so from that, it's a, it's a completely free service. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Um, and last year, we got lots of fest great, great Escape Raft first, but we've got lots of festivals using it. And it's been really good because we can market mm. um, those festivals and those artists, but everyone, everyone who uses it does pick bands. So we're able to, especially probably from next month, start pushing, you know, hey, this band and this band, this band yeah, got yeah. picked for Live at Leeds or for The Great Escape or for wherever it is. Nice. Um, so, yes, it's a really nice free tool that kind of is a win-win for everyone. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> so, um, so, okay, so uh, let's say I'm an independent artist mm -hmm. and I want... I'm very intrigued about Music Glue after hearing hearing this podcast. Hopefully yeah. that happens. <laughs> and I want to be involved. I want to um, I want to sign up. I want to try to do this apply to play. What is the first step for an artist? Uh, well, there's two there's two steps. So if you want to do an apply to play, you um, can go to one of the festivals that have an apply to play and just put mm. your name in and click apply. And okay. if you have a Music Glue account, then you can log into that and you can just pick the festival you want. If you don't have a Music Glue account, we'll prompt you to create one and then that will go through to the to the festival. Sweet. So it's as simple as that, really. 
That was the first one. The so that's the first one, and, yeah. then, and then in general, you can just go to musically.com and create an account. Sweet. So yeah. it's that easy. That's easy, yeah. So am I right in saying that the artists, I mean, you guys do the, the hard, dirty work, hard, dirty, the, uh, <laughs> the, the stuff in the back end. Yeah. Um, but the artist does need to, they do also need to pull their work. Yeah, so we're a self-service platform, yeah. fund- fundamentally. So um, anyone can do every. So what, what we prefer is artists and managers and mm-hmm. labels to, to, to log in and to do as much themselves. Yeah. Um, but we're on hand to help, so we have a live chat in the back end that um, people man 24-7 that can answer questions. Um, we are going to be developing um, a lot more how-to stuff for the website. Um, it is quite intuitive. Once you've figured out how to do one thing, it's, it's pretty simple to mm-hmm. use. But if you are uh, not of a certain level, I don't mean it that way, but if you've got a tour coming up, for instance... Um, I would suggest getting in touch with us because we have a ticketing department yeah, that know all the promoters so and they can reach out and get the allocations agreed and set up mm. for you. Or if you want your album to chart, um, then again, it's really best to drop us a line so we make sure it's set up properly. Mm. And if you think you're going to shift more than you can handle, we suggest using one of our fulfillment centres that can mm. take that pain away from you. You know, So, yeah. so there's those kind of things i remember about four three four years ago pepe and i were helping out a friend uh, an american artist who was uh, going around europe mm. and we were setting up the tour and doing driving around doing all that all of that adventurous stuff i if we had music glue <laughs> i can see how it would have helped us so much to yeah. just sort everything out well we had a, we had a great uh, example there's a wonderful band we worked with from bristol called area 11 mm-hmm. and um they have a fantastic fan base a really great band and um I discovered them because uh, they were already doing their own thing. Mm. But two and a bit years ago, we okayed them for ticketing, and they, you know, sold hundreds and hundreds of tickets in a day. And I was just like, "Who is this? Like, who on earth is this band? I've no idea." So I did some digging, and I gave them a call. And we met up, and then they moved onto the platform. And they've been a fantastic um, example of, of 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 a do-it-yourself mm. band that was successful. You know, they booked a. 20 plus day tour, wow. hired the venues, sold all the tickets themselves. All over the UK? All over the UK. Wow. Um, they crowdfunded their second album. You know, they did just so much, you know, and I, I won't go into like money made or anything like sure. that. But let's just say, you know, they did really, really well. It's hard work, but mm. they literally went, we can do this. You mm. know, we can. We and can are they independent? Friends. They're independent, yeah. Which leads yeah. me to my next question, yes. which is not on my notes. <laughs> um, with artists these days having so much success, just being independent, um, is there a need for artists to strive their goal to be on a label? Um, hmm. I, personally, my goal would never to be on a label. I okay. would say that being on a label in the future, or, or even currently, should be a option that you get to pick hopefully mm. as opposed to it being the only option mm. so i think in the old days for 50 years you had to sign a record deal yeah and then your record label had to get your song on the radio so people could hear it mm. and then that got put in record shops so people could go and buy it and then you toured so people could see it and then they'd go and buy the record that mm. was that, that was that was the ecosystem we live in such a different world now yeah which is amazing mm-hmm. totally different um, totally different revenue streams. We're in YouTube here, you know. Mm-hmm. That's a completely other revenue stream for people yeah. these days. Um, what I would love, and, I, what, and what I do see, uh, and I'd like to see more, is artists that are, are using a platform like ours, that are generating revenue, that can contact a, a fan base of whatever size, and then they can go, we need to do X for our next project. Do we crowdfund it from our fans? Do we use a label services company? which are plenty of now, you know, mm. Absolute, um, Red Essential. You know, there's a whole bunch of these companies that can can support you in that label services role. Um, and there's the majors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I met a fund recently called Amplify that also can help invest in artists if they're the right artists. Cool. So there's a whole host of it's all things that there, you can yeah. do. It's all out there. Um, but I think it's easier if you've got... Um, the data to hand of who your yeah. fans are, where they are, and what, and what you can do. I mean, yeah. I think a label, if, you, if I showed up and said, no one's heard of me, but I can contact 100,000 people that I know have bought something from me in the last two years, exactly. they'd be interested, yeah. even before I hand over my, yeah. my music, you know? Yeah, so, yeah data um, is so important. Massive, I was uh, yeah. talking to a Googler, and she, she was saying, look, you have three years' worth of um, data on your YouTube channel. 
go back and and just look look mm-hmm. at it and assess it. So um, yeah. yeah, that that uh, it's really important. Yeah. All right. So um, Joe, I have a one last question for you. Okay. And it's a question that I ask everyone at the end. Yeah. Um, and it started from an artist, a YouTube artist, who's actually doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I asked her um, what, in your eyes, um, why are you so successful? Mm-hmm. And uh, she said to me, she doesn't think she's successful. Um, she is just doing what she's doing. But from the outside looking in, mm-hmm. you can see she had X amount of numbers, which are really impressive. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was like, no, you are successful. So mm. I want to ask you, because we were just talking about yeah. success. Yeah. Um, in your eyes, what is a successful artist? Um, that depends on the artist. Sure. So, you know, if... I've had this discussion with people before. If um, your version of success is for selling Wembley, but you'll only ever sell Bricks and Academy, you're, gonna be up, you're not going to be a happy person, mm. you know? So I think that's a question people need to ask themselves is what is what do I what is success for me yeah Um, I also think it's a very important question when you're starting out because if you don't ask that you could end up down a road where you know you might have a load of stuff be like actually I've given up all my creativity I've written a load of bland pop hits I'm a millionaire yeah but I'm miserable yeah, yeah that's you true. know, but someone else might go. Mm. I was doing that. I wrote a load of pop hits. All I ever want to do was write some money and be a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. It's just fantastic, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it really does depend. Yeah, you know? it really, really does depend. I love it. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Um, I actually have one more question. Yes. Um, what's the future for music list? The future is uh, growth. Sure. Um, uh, adding new features. Um, can you, adding can you talk about the features, or is it? Can I talk about the features? Let's uh, not get you fired. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's just say we're building some really fun, That's awesome great. features that will be beneficial to everyone. Mm. Um, we're actively working on that at the moment. Um, this year will be a year of us releasing various bits in the back end of our platform that will help. Bits on the front end. Um, we've got some interesting partnerships on the horizon. Um, we've got some pretty big named artists that we, uh, we know are moving over to the platform. So it's going to be it's a really exciting year, mm. um, and our tech is fantastic. We've got a fantastic tech team, and and I'm really excited to see how that now grows. Having got to see it in action, it's 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 a it's a fun bit of kit. Sweet. So yes, yeah, so well, good. you've had a from judging from what you were saying, you've had a great first quarter. Yeah. I hope you have a, the great remaining quarters of Thank the year you. and I wish you all the success for music Luke because like I said when I first came across it which was by accident yeah. I was like oh my gosh they put on a great f- um, service for, for artists and um, I really wanted to have you down and thank you for your time no worries thank Joe, you very thank much you again. cheers Bye-bye. thank you